if you've got a table of data with lots of columns that you want to rename and you don't want to manually do them one at a time, then do you know about list.zip and the quicker table to rows? No? Well, keep watching. Here we go. We've got a table of data we've pulled into Power Query and we've got fact underscore in front of each one. And we want to get rid of those headings. So there's a standard sort of way of doing this. It's to create the original list, the new list, and then use that to replace all these items, okay? But there's two techniques. There's list.zip that I'll do first, and then table to rows. And this technique, the table to rows technique, I saw from um, Matt Allington's video. I'll put a link below. And I really like this technique. It's probably my favorite now. And I'll do that one at the end, okay? So keep watching. Right. So firstly, I want to grab all these headings. And why do I want to do that? Well, let me just change one of these manually just to show you. So if I change this just to say the word color, okay, I get a little list. Those curly brackets, right? That means a list. And if I change another one, okay, this one to size, I open this up a little bit, I get another list. And actually this is a list of lists, okay? Curly brackets within curly brackets. So that's what I want to get. I want to be able to replace this hard-coded list with my own list. Okay, so I'm going to go back here and just to make this really nice and easy for myself, I'm going to insert a step after here and call this starting point. All right. And actually, I'm going to make it one word just to avoid having to put the hash later on when I'm referring to it. Okay, there we go. Now I'm going to grab these headings. And the way to do that, I can simply right click, insert step after. See, it says starting point up in the heading here. And I want to get the table the column names. So make sure you're not right next to it. Just go to the left here. And if you start typing names, IntelliSense will kick in and click on table.column names. Then do the shift shuffle. So shift down arrow key, shift nine. All right. And then just either click, well, click the tick is the easiest thing. Sometimes when you press enter, it just starts a new line, which is a bit annoying. Click on the tick. That is the table column names. Okay, now I could do some fancy stuff with list.transform and each and stuff like that, but I can never remember all this. And it's just, I like the clicks. So I wanna be able to extract the word fact underscore. So I am gonna turn this into a table. And this is extra steps that you could be fancy about, but I, I remember how to do this every time. So, and it's a few clicks, so it's pretty easy. All right, so there's my little table, and I am going to extract everything after the underscore. Now I could use right-click column from examples, but I happen to know that I can go to add columns, okay, and then I can go to extract text after delimiter, okay? So I can grab everything after the delimiter that's the underscore. So there's my new column, and I'll just call this um, original, and I'll call this one new. Right, I then need to turn this into a list of lists, the original name and the, the column name, or the new column name. So there's a couple of ways of doing this that I mentioned. There's the list.zip method. So let me rename this as old and new. Okay, so this step is called old and new. And I'm right click, reference that. And again, I'm only doing this, or sorry, insert step after. I'm only doing this just to make my code easier to read and for me to pick apart in the future and easier to write as well, to be honest. So from here, if I went like this and I put a square bracket, I'm sort of explaining this broken down into pieces here. If I want to just grab the original column, enter, See, that's a list. And if I wanted to combine it with the old and new square bracket, new column, okay, 
if I just press enter now, I'll get an error. It's saying, hey, you know, what, what are you trying to do here? Well, you need to actually say this is going to be a list. So you need to put it in curly brackets. So here's a list, all right? The original and the new. But it's not really doing what I want. I want it to say, hey, fat color needs to be in a list with uh, color. So this is where list.zip comes in. And I guess you picture it like it zipping together these two lists so they all sort of line up. Um, so check this out. If you type zip, tab, shift down arrow, shift nine, okay. So we're zipping together these, press enter. Now we've got fat color with color, fat size with size. We sort of zipped together those two separate lists like pulling a zip down. Um, it's a weird concept. All right, and I'll just call this new one um, list for renaming. Okay. Then I want to go back to the starting point. So I'm just going to right click, insert step after. Okay, and all this is going to be is starting point. Give that a little tick. Right, and just to kick this off, I'm just going to manually change a couple of these. That's color. And here we go. There's our list of lists, right? I know there's only one item, but it's the same concept. And you can replace that now with list for renaming. Give it a little tick and it's done. Okay. So then all this little chunk down here, and again, I really should rename this as back to start or something like this. Rename the columns. All this section, okay, I am just going to go and say right click. I like to put this into a bucket. Insert step after. Um, I'm going to call this everything before there is um, renaming calls. Okay, and I'm actually going to go up here just before the starting point, insert step after, and again, do the, I like pressing F2 to edit step, rename calls. I also use emojis to do this, but it's a nice way of just sort of flagging that there's a start and finish to that little chunk. Okay, pretty cool, okay? Now, a better way, well not a better way, but a quicker way and an easier way potentially is Rather than list.zip, which is a bit of a, you know, that formula, maybe hard to remember a little bit, the original and the old and the new, check this out. Another alternative, right? I could do that, what I'm about to show you, exactly here, okay? I could replace list.zip with what I'm about to show you. But another method. Here, I have a table of the original names and the new names, maybe held in Excel or somewhere or enter data in Power BI, whatever. Okay, so here's the originals and I actually wanna make some more changes. So I wanna correct the American spelling to color and I wanna change the word unit sold to quantity sold. So there's more changes going on here. So this is just being pulled in from a, a source somewhere. Right, check this out. Table to rows. And this is where Matt Allenton's video just flagged this to me. Um, I can just right click, okay, insert step after. Again, click after the equal sign, leave a little gap, and just put two rows. And there we go, table to rows, shift down, shift nine, give it a tick. This creates a list of lists. Look, fat color to color, fat size to size. Easier than list.zip, okay? So here's my heading rename list, and I could just go back in here, and I could say rather than that list.zip, you know, this bit, I could actually, I don't really, for this exact example, I don't really need all this extract the beginning, extract the end, but, you know, let, let's say um, I want to do that. All I have to do is replace this step with uh, heading rename list. And I don't even really need to do that. I could simply go straight here and I could change this 
to heading rename list. Press enter. Okay, so I don't really need those other steps for this method when you're using a source to go from to. So there we go. That's it. Table rename columns. Back to start. Heading rename list. And heading rename list is simply this. Table to rows source. When your source is what your original was and what your new column names are. That's pretty cool. Okay, so list.zips one method might be really handy. Um, table to rows, really handy. And if I wanted to go back and just edit this, I could go back in here and I could say, rather than doing all this nonsense, okay, I could just go take this and say, put a little space there, to rows, open the bracket, okay, old and new, that's all the data. Enter. See, same result. And this would work as well. Beautiful. Okay, hope you find that useful. Let me know what you think. Did you know about table to rows? Do you use it? Have you used list.zip? Have you got a use case where this is useful for you? Let me know. Love getting your feedback. I'll catch you in the next video.